Hello and welcome back to Immortal News. In this video, we'll be covering 10 stars who passed away today, August 29th, and others who have recently passed away. We'll also delve into health updates about Elton John, news about UNC Chapel Hill graduate student Tyle Key, who allegedly shot a faculty member in a helicopter crash in Pompano Beach, Florida. Please stay with us, and do not forget to give us a thumbs up, as your support means a lot to us and helps us keep doing what we're doing. Thank you. Number 10. August, a flourishing talent in songwriting and performance. August 08, born Ray Dave and Jacobs, the Los Angeles-based singer and songwriter, passed away on Monday, as confirmed by his family and the Def Jam Recordings label. The cause of death has not been disclosed. He was most recently known for his 2022 album, Seasick, and for signing with Jenna Aiko's Allo Sound label earlier the same year. Before launching his own music career, August gained recognition as a notable songwriter. He co-wrote hits like DJ Khaled's I'm the One and Wales Fashion Week, featuring g Easy. He initially signed with 88 Rising in 2018 and was prominently featured in songs like Tequila Sunrise with Gold Link, Jackson Wang, and Higher Brothers as well as Midsummer Madness featuring Higher Brothers Rich Brian and Joji. August's family expressed their pride and gratitude for his life, highlighting how he touched millions through his music. His sister Blackie stated, I find comfort in knowing that my brother lived a full life of abundance. He was able to travel the world and touch millions of people while fulfilling his sole purpose as a musician. Their mother added that he will continue to blossom and spread his love through music. Notable musicians like Big Sean and Reason paid their tributes online, turning the comment section of August's last Instagram post into a memorial space. Def Jam's official statement celebrated him as a brilliant songwriter, an accomplished musician, and a singular artist, while extending sympathies to his family. In a life that touched many, August leaves behind a rich legacy in both songwriting and his own musical endeavors. His most recent album, Seasick, featured collaborations with artists like Schoolboy Q and Janae Aiko and served as a testament to his evolving artistry. Tribute to August 08, a prodigious talent whose musical legacy will continue to resonate. Former Bachelorette contestant Josh Sider is alive and well despite a post from his Instagram account announcing his unexpected passing. Hey guys, as you can see, um, I am alive and well. Um, my account was hacked. Um, for the last 24 hours, I've been trying desperately to get into it. Sider claimed his account was hacked by someone playing a cruel joke and mocking his struggles with mental illness. He apologized for the confusion and pain caused by the post, and said he would work with his team to identify who was behind it. Previously, a post on his account, seemingly from his family, shared the tragic news of his passing and asked for privacy. Sider had appeared on the 2015 series of The Bachelorette, but was voted out in the first week. He was most recently linked to RuPaul's Drag Race star, Monica Beverly Hills, who posted a tribute believing he had passed away. Number 9. James Casey, a resounding note in the symphony of life. James Casey, the cherished saxophonist and a paramount member of the Trey Anastasio Band, left an indelible mark in the world of music. He passed away at the age of 40 on August 28th, after a two-year battle with colon cancer. Born in Tacoma Park, Maryland, and raised in a music-loving family in Phoenix, Arizona, James was destined for greatness. By nine, the saxophone had become his voice, and by his early 20s, that voice was echoing through the hallways of Berklee College of Music. James's journey saw him collaborate with bands like Solive, Lettuce, and many big names in the industry, including Dave Matthews Band, Fish, and John Legend, among others. However, it was his alliance with Trey Anastasio that made him a household name in the world of music. His dedication to his craft never wavered, even when diagnosed with colon cancer in 2021. 
James used his platform to raise awareness about early colon cancer screenings, emphasizing its curability when detected early. His album, A Little Something for Everyone, and his short film, Music as Medicine, A James Casey Story, are testaments to his commitment to this cause. James is survived by his wife, Ayla Cobb Casey, his parents, Dwayne John Casey, and Gina Renee Miles Casey, his sister, Rachel Jean Cato, and brother, Stephen Dwayne Casey. Donations in memory of James can be directed towards the GoFundMe campaign set up in his honor or the Colorectal Cancer Alliance. Tribute to James Casey. Number 8. Pat Corrales, a pillar in baseball's landscape, from catcher to manager to mentor. Pat Corrales, the trailblazing Mexican-American MLB manager renowned for his more than six decades in baseball, passed away at the age of 82 on August 27th night. The Los Angeles Dodgers confirmed that he died of natural causes at his home in the North Georgia mountains. In his final role, Corrales had been serving as a special assistant to the Dodgers' general manager since 2012. Born in Los Angeles, Corrales had a modest nine-season stint as a backup catcher, but it was his managerial and coaching career that set him apart. Notably, he became MLB's first manager of Mexican-American descent when he took the reins of the Texas Rangers in 1978. Over two full seasons with the Rangers, he finished with a record of 160, 164. He managed the Philadelphia Phillies to an 89-73 record in his only full season in 1982. Despite being let go in 1983, Corrales quickly found new opportunities, including a five-season spell managing Cleveland. Known back then as the Indians, his most memorable time in the league may have come during his coaching stint with the Atlanta Braves under Hall of Fame manager Bobby Cox from 1990 to 2006. Corrales was a vital part of a Braves team that dominated the league with 14 straight division titles and a World Series championship in 1995. His mentorship extended to countless young players, making an indelible impact on the sport. Corrales was survived by his wife, Donna Myers Corrales, his daughters, Rena Hammerness and Patricia Collins, and son, Jason Corrales. Two of his children, Patrick Corrales and Michelle Pollitt, predeceased him. In a statement, Stan Kasten, the Dodgers president and CEO, encapsulated Corrales' essence. He loved mentoring young players, and the number of players he influenced is too long to count. Pat truly loved the game of baseball, and we will miss him. Tribute to Pat Corrales. Number 7. Frank Sonny Seiler, a bulldog legacy and a legal luminary. Frank Sonny Seiler, the legal mind behind the University of Georgia's famed UGA Bulldog mascots and a central figure in the case documented in the book Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, passed away on August 28th at the age of 90. Seiler died in his hometown of Savannah, Georgia, after a short illness. The tradition of the UGA mascots began in 1956 when Sealer and his late wife Cecilia brought their English Bulldog to a Georgia football game at the request of then-coach Wally Butts. Over the years, Sealer's family continued to raise a line of these iconic mascots, which have garnered widespread acclaim, including an appearance on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Georgia Athletic Director Josh Brooks said, UGA is the most beloved and recognizable mascot in all of college athletics. We owe him a tremendous debt of gratitude. Sealer was also a legal figure, most prominently as the defense attorney for Savannah Antiques dealer Jim Williams, a case that inspired John Barron's 1994 best-selling book and its subsequent 1997 film adaptation directed by Clint Eastwood. Sealer's ties to cinema extended further as a member of the Screen Actors Guild, and he appeared in films like The Gingerbread Man and The Legend of Bagger Vance. A dedicated alumnus, Sealer graduated with both his bachelor's and law degrees 
from the University of Georgia and was a senior partner at the Savannah firm Buhan Falligan. He served on the Georgia Athletic Association's Board of Directors and various other alma mater associated organizations. Sealer leaves behind four children, seven grandchildren, and a great-grandchild. His wife of 59 years, Cecilia, predeceased him in 2014. Tribute to Frank Sonny Sealer. Number six, Robert Hale, a resonant force in opera and song. Robert Hale, bass baritone, renowned for his commanding stage presence and versatile voice, passed away at the age of 90 on August 23rd. Born on August 22, 1933, in Kerrville, Texas, Hale grew up in Louisiana before settling in Oklahoma City for high school and college. He graduated from Bethany Peniel College in 1955 with a bachelor's in music and later obtained his master's at the University of Oklahoma. During his early career in Oklahoma, Hale garnered the National Association of Teachers of Singing Singer of the Year Award. He then pursued further studies at Boston University and the New England Conservatory of Music. In a critical milestone, he won the Metropolitan Opera National Council auditions and made his operatic debut in 1967 at the New York City Opera in La Boheme. He enjoyed a 10-year association with the New York City Opera, performing in seminal works like Lucia di Lammermoor, Anna Bolena, and I Puritani. Hale's global reputation took him to prestigious opera houses like the Metropolitan Opera, Deutsche Oper Berlin, Royal Opera House, Teatro alla Scala, and many more. He also graced renowned festivals such as Salzburg, Bregenz, Tanglewood, and Ravinia. His signature roles included Wotan Wanderer in Wagner's Ring Cycle and the title role in The Flying Dutchman. In his later years, Hale delighted audiences in recitals with his wife, soprano Julie Davies, under the name Hale and Davies, Celebration of Song. His recordings, including performances in Wagner's Das Rheingold, Die Walkür, and The Flying Dutchman continue to serve as a benchmark in the world of opera. Hale leaves behind an invaluable legacy that transcends recordings and performances, influencing countless young performers and bringing classical works to new audiences. Tribute to Robert Hale. Number 5. Eleanor Fauché, a visionary in French cinema and Cannes laureate. Eleanor Fauché, acclaimed French director and screenwriter, passed away on August 27th at the age of 50. The news of her demise was shared on social media by Jean-Christophe Delpia, the father of her two children and a fellow filmmaker. Fauché was celebrated for her feature films Brodeuses and Gamines, both of which received critical and public acclaim. Born on January 10, 1973, in Nantes, France, Fauché studied cinema at the École Nationale Supérieure Louis Lumière. She initially began her career as a camera assistant, but quickly transitioned into scriptwriting. She rose to fame in 2004 with her debut feature, Brodoises, winning the Grand Prix of the Critics Week and the SACD Prize at the Cannes Film Festival, along with the award for Best French Script at the Deauville Festival. Faucher continued her storytelling prowess with the 2009 film Gamines, adapted from the autobiography of actress Sylvie Testud, who played herself in the film. She later directed TV movies including La Maladroite, a poignant story about child abuse inspired by a real-life case. Delphius described Faucher as an exceptional woman, a fighter, and a sensitive artist, and emphasized that she faced her illness with exemplary courage. She leaves behind two children and a legacy that has enriched French cinema. Tribute to Eleanor Faucher. Number 4. 
Douglas Kyle, a trailblazer in athletics and community building. Douglas Kyle, two-time Olympian and founder of the Calgary Marathon, passed away at the age of 91 following a single-vehicle rollover accident in Calgary Southeast on August 28th. Kyle was taken to the hospital with serious injuries and later succumbed to them. Authorities have ruled out drugs or alcohol as contributing factors in the collision. Born and raised in Canada, Kyle had a distinguished athletic career, representing the country in the 1956 and 1960 Olympics in track and field events for the 5000M and 10,000M races. In 1963, he founded the Calgary Marathon, which began with 19 participants and has grown to over 10,000 participants, raising over a million dollars for charities each year. His impact on the community went beyond athletics. He was involved in several organizations, working tirelessly to make Calgary a better place. Survived by his son Robert and grandson James, who both shared his passion for running, Kyle leaves behind a rich legacy of sportsmanship and community involvement. His family, who were by his side in his final moments and the broader running community, mourn the loss of this athletic and philanthropic icon. Tribute to Douglas Kyle Number 3. Andrzej Presigs, a multifaceted talent in Polish arts and politics. Andrzej Presigs, a versatile figure in Polish theater, film, and politics, passed away on August 26 at the age of 74. A graduate of the acting department at the National Film School in Lodz in 1972, Presigs made an immediate impact on stage with his debut role in Torun by Stefan Zoromski at the Ludwig Solski Theater in Tarnow. His acting career spanned several renowned theaters, including the Stefan Jarach Theater in Lodz and the New Theater in Warsaw. In 1971, he made his film debut with a cameo in the comedy 150 Per Hour, and later contributed to numerous TV and cinema projects. He also extended his talents to voice acting and dubbing direction. Prasigs ventured into politics in 2006, becoming a local councillor of Bruino from the Civic Platform list. Although an unsuccessful run for mayor followed, he was re-elected as a councillor in 2010 and was an active member of the local authorities division of the PO. A man of manifold talents, Presigs leaves behind a rich legacy in both the artistic and political landscapes of Poland. Tribute to Andrzej Presigs. Breaking news. News 1. Elton John, the iconic Rocketman singer, found himself momentarily grounded after a fall at his villa in Nice, France. The 76-year-old music legend was swiftly treated and discharged, according to a statement from his representative. This incident raised eyebrows among fans already concerned about the star's health. Last year John had hip surgery following a fall, and more recently he was seen using a wheelchair although he clarified it was to rest his hip after performances. Just last month, the musician concluded his farewell Yellow Brick Road tour, marking an end to 50 years of live shows. Your response to every show has been phenomenal, and I'm loving every minute of it, he assured fans on Instagram. Despite a few health-related hiccups, including a bout of COVID-19 earlier this year, Elton John remains resolute. The show and life must go on. News 2. Shockwaves reverberate through the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill after a graduate student allegedly shot and killed a faculty member, locking down the campus for hours. Tai Lei Chi, the suspect in custody, was known for a string of cryptic and concerning social media posts hinting at stress, conflicts, and depression. Police and university officials have yet to confirm if the faculty member killed was Chi's PI, principal investigator, with whom he had expressed frustrations. Chancellor Kevin Guskiewicz expressed his heartbreak, stating, This is really a time for the community to come together. Students, staff, and faculty were forced into hours-long lockdowns in classrooms and labs, while police conducted a frantic search. The fatal event has stunned a community already vigilant about safety, and comes on the heels of another recent campus shooting at NCA and T University in Greensboro. 
Amidst the tragedy, the focus now turns to the well-being of the nearly 30,000 students and staff at UNC Chapel Hill as questions about campus safety and mental health support loom large. News 3. In a devastating accident, a Broward Sheriff's Office fire rescue helicopter crashed into a small apartment complex in Pompano Beach, Florida, on Monday morning on August 28th, claiming two lives. Among the deceased is Captain Terryson Jackson, a 19-year veteran of Broward Sheriff Fire Rescue. He was 50 years old. Three individuals were aboard the helicopter when it went down. The National Transportation Safety Board confirmed that Captain Jackson was killed in the crash, and another person on the ground also lost their life due to the impact. The helicopter was en route to a scene in North Lauderdale when the tragedy occurred. The crash has deeply affected the Pompano Beach community, which is located approximately 40 miles north of Miami. The NTSB is investigating the incident to determine the cause. As the community grieves, questions about the safety of emergency air transport and the well-being of first responders come to the forefront. This tragic event marks a somber day for both Broward Sheriff Fire Rescue and the broader Pompano Beach community. The loss of Captain Jackson, who dedicated nearly two decades of his life to public service, is a blow to an organization committed to saving lives. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Ed Asner, an iconic presence in television and activism. Ed Asner, renowned for his portrayal of the gruff yet endearing newsman Lou Grant on The Mary Tyler Moore Show and its spin-off Lou Grant, passed away at his home in Tarzana, California on August 29th in 2021. He was 91. While the cause of death was not specified, his family confirmed his passing via Twitter. Born on November 15, 1929, in Kansas City, Missouri, Asner was the youngest of five children of Orthodox Jewish immigrants from Poland and Russia. He first stepped into the spotlight at the age of 40 when he took on the role of Lou Grant. His performance earned him three Emmys for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series and two for Best Lead Actor in a Drama, making him the first to win Emmys for playing the same character in both comedy and drama formats. Besides this, he won Emmys for his roles in the 1976 miniseries Rich Man, Poor Man and the groundbreaking 1977 miniseries Roots, along with five Golden Globes. In addition to his television roles, Asner was an accomplished film actor, lending his voice to the Oscar-winning animated film Up and playing Santa Claus in the holiday classic Elf. He was also a dedicated political activist and served as president of the Screen Actors Guild from 1981 to 1985. Asner leaves behind an enduring legacy, not just through his iconic roles, but also through his activism, particularly his support for unionism and animal rights. He was married twice and is survived by his four children, Liza, Katie, Charles, and Matthew, and ten grandchildren. Tribute to Ed Asner. Number 1. Cliff Robinson, trailblazer on and off the basketball court. Cliff Robinson, an impactful player for the University of Connecticut and a lasting force in the NBA, passed away at his home on August 29th in 2020. He was 53 years old. The cause of death was lymphoma, confirmed by his family. He was raised by his mother, Helena Horn, after his father passed away. Robinson attended UConn and played for future Hall of Fame coach Jim Calhoun. He led the Huskies to the 1988 National Invitation Tournament Championship and was a two-time Big East All-Conference selection. He averaged 15.6 points during his four seasons at UConn. Drafted by the Portland Trailblazers in the second round of the 1989 NBA Draft, Robinson emerged as a versatile stretch forward capable of both inside and outside plays. He was exceptionally durable, playing in 761 consecutive regular season games a standing team record. He was named the NBA's sixth man of the year in the 1992 to 1993 season and earned all-star status in 1994. 
Robinson had a career average of 14.2 points and also played for the Phoenix Suns, Detroit Pistons, Golden State Warriors, and New Jersey Nets before retiring in 2007. Known for his flair, Robinson popularized wearing headbands and even had a dance named after him, the Uncle Cliffy, following a Trailblazers victory in 1992. Beyond basketball, Robinson was a contestant on the reality TV show Survivor and was part of a much-debated visit to North Korea organized by Dennis Rodman in 2014, a longtime advocate for marijuana use for its health benefits, especially for athletes. Robinson opened a marijuana dispensary in Portland in 2017. He is survived by his mother, six children, Jessica, Jalen, Isaiah, Savannah, Clifford, and Lyle, and siblings Craig, Tori, Rashard, and Elisa. Jim Calhoun summed up Robinson's legacy aptly. He was our first great player. He gave legitimacy to the program. You could not pay for the exposure that he gave us. Tribute to Cliff Robinson. That concludes our coverage for today, but the stories of those we've lost continue to resonate with us all. We invite you to also watch our special feature on the 13 biggest stars who died recently, where we pay homage to the lives, talents, and legacies that have left an indelible mark on our world. You can find the link to that video in the description below, or click on the card appearing on your screen now. If you found today's video informative and touching, Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Immortal News for more compelling stories and tributes. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video. Stay safe and take care.